Thank you for taking time to watch my video today. My name is Emmeline Daly and I am a master's student at Virginia Tech in the School of Plant and Environmental Sciences. And today I will be telling you about sampling techniques for annual bluegrass weevil larvae. Accurate annual bluegrass larval sampling is important for a couple of reasons. The first is that ABW has an asynchronous life cycle. This means that multiple life stages, such as larvae, pupa, and adults, can be present at any given time throughout the growing season. The second factor that makes accurate sampling important is that adults and larvae are managed using different insecticides. So knowing which life stages are most prevalent on your course will allow you to make better insecticide decisions. And because we are seeing more and more cases of resistance issues involving annual bluegrass weevil, being able to use the accurate chemistries and rotating them as well will help prevent this on your course. Misapplying an insecticide, let's say using an adulticide when larvae are most prevalent on your course, can lead to increased damage as these adulticides will do no damage to the larvae. Therefore, through the use of accurate monitoring and sampling techniques, you will be able to make more informed decisions about ABW treatment and management on your course. There are two common methods to sample for ABW larvae. The first is a salt float method, and the second is a berlaise tolgren funnel method. In order to conduct this study to determine which of these methods is most accurate, we took plugs from two sites in southwest Virginia, Blacksburg and Roanoke. Each of these turf grass plugs was divided into groups of three. Then, each group of three was subjected to one of two methods of larval sampling, either the salt float or the berlaise tolgren funnel. In order to conduct a salt float, you need relatively simple materials. The first is turf grass plugs of interest, which plugs you want to examine. You need salt, water, a sealable container, and also forceps or tweezers to help you with the observation of the salt float. First, you take your plugs and begin to break them apart. Each plug should be at a depth of roughly one and one quarter inches. You should break the plugs up fine enough so there are no large chunks, and you should spend about a minute on each plug. The larger the chunks you break the plugs into, the less accurate your larval and pupil counts will be. Repeat this one minute process for each of your three plugs. By the end, you should have something that looks a little like this. Now, take a salt water mixture, which is one pound salt to one gallon of water, and pour it into your container. Be sure to cover the plugs fully and leave about an inch and a half of air space at the top of your container. Once you've finished pouring your mixture, be sure to use the top of your container and seal your container as tightly as possible. Once your container is tightly sealed, you can move on to the next step, which is shaking your container. You should shake your container for five minutes Shaking allows the larvae to become dislodged from inside the grass plant sheath and also allows the later instar larvae and pupa to be dislodged from the soil. Once five minutes has elapsed, simply remove the top of your container and you can begin to observe the surface of the water mixture for any larvae or pupa or even adults. Using a salt float method can also tell you about other insects you might have in your turf grass, such as cutworms or fall armyworms, as these will also float. Using a salt float method ultimately takes practice. Finding earlier instar larvae can be especially difficult if you haven't had much practice with this method. The second method that was tested is the berlaise tolgren funnel method. For this method, you're going to need a little more materials than the salt float. You're going to need, of course, your turf grass plugs of interest, a 250 watt light bulb, a funnel, a piece of metal wire mesh, and a catch jar or beaker to catch your arthropods, and water in the bottom of said catch jar. Now let's set up our berlaise tolgren funnel method. First, you're going to take your funnel. I used about a one pint funnel, but any size is relatively fine. Then take your piece of wire mesh and place it over the hole of your funnel. You're going to want to push the sides in to form to the contour of the funnel. Next, take your funnel and place it. Then, take your catch jar filled with some water and place it underneath of your funnel. All of this should be underneath of the heat lamp. Then, take your plugs and break them up like we broke up the salt float plugs. 
you're going to want smaller pieces because ultimately a Berlazi funnel works when the heat source forces the arthropods to move to an area of more moisture or your catch jar. So the smaller your pieces, the easier this process will be for your arthropods. This is what it should look like before you begin your heat treatment. Now turn on your light or heat source and allow the plugs to sit for 48 hours. After I collected the larval data from both methods, I then used JUMP as a statistical analyzer. Ultimately, I found that there are no significant differences between the two sampling methods, and both yielded pretty similar results. However, there were more weevils observed at the Blacksburg location than the Roanoke location, but this difference in pressure did not impact the counts from the different sampling methods. Which sampling method you use at your course is ultimately up to your own schedule and preferences. The salt float method yields immediate results, with the whole process taking about 20 to 25 minutes. However, the actual act of counting your larvae can become rather difficult if you haven't practiced this method much. Determining your larval counts with the berlazi tolgren funnel method is definitely easier. However, it takes 48 hours to yield results. The materials for both methods can all be found at a store, however, the materials for the salt float methods are definitely more common and can be found in the everyday pantry. So ultimately, it is up to you as a turf grass manager to weigh the pros and cons of each method and determine which method works best for you. This concludes my presentation, and with that, I'd like to acknowledge the following parties, the David McCall Lab, the Tom Kuhar Lab, and Daniel Kuhar, along with the Virginia Turfgrass Foundation, the Virginia Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, along with the Department of Entomology and the School of Plant and Environmental Science here at Virginia Tech. If you have any questions about this presentation, feel free to email me at emmelineh at vt.edu. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I hope you have a great rest of your day.